Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. And I tell you, Bill Cooksey, uh, maybe we can get in some words now that Ron's moved on. But uh, he is uh, up there at the American Crappie Trail event. And, of course, if anybody knows what's going on at Kentucky Lake, and Bill Cooksey always wants to know, who do we go to, Bill? I'd go to Steve McAdams. I would go to Steve McAdams. And I've been going to him since 1988. And uh, (laughs) every time I talk to him, uh, uh, Jim Perry says, talk to somebody else. But I'll tell you what, but uh, me and Steve go back uh, a a lot of years and appreciate him as a waterfowl guide and and a fishing guide on Kentucky Lake. And and my wife was just saying, we need to get up there sometime. But uh, Steve is so busy. You know, he books by the hour now, is the way I understand. So um, are you hearing Not that? Not quite that busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. that. You know, you might start just say, can I fish an hour with Steve McAdam? You can figure out, you know, yeah. the minimum wage, come you on. know. Uh, that, that come kind on of, up. Come, come on up. Bring an appetite. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, bring an appetite. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what's the situation with the lodge? i got to ask you. What's going on with the, with the lodge well, up there? Well, Harris Landing State Park is under construction and renovation has been for almost two years, it seems like. They're saying by late fall. Late fall. That, uh, they'll open their doors and things will go. We'll see. they got a ways to go, but they are making progress. Well, I know that's, yeah. uh, that's great, and um, I've seen pictures of it, and I saw the pictures of the destruction. got so many memories up there. I know you do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this. Yeah, it's, uh, we all. Uh, greatly anticipate its reopening and because uh, we've missed it dramatically. I, I guarantee you, because a lot of the folks stay there, you know. So yeah, absolutely. It yep. cuts into yep. not not just the state business, but all you folks. Uh, oh, it's a it's a magnet for the whole area. Yeah, right and it comes at a time when we're dealing with COVID at the same time. Yep. So it's yep. a double whammy. Well, Steve, let's talk. And I know uh, Bill, uh, knowing his uh, love of Kentucky Lake, this has been as we talked to Steve earlier. This has been a crazy spring. Uh, I mean, oh. we we, any, we don't don't even want to get into waterfowl. I mean, because Steve, well, we've got waterfowl weather this week. We <laughs> there you it back go. During the duck season, when I wanted it, here it is, late April, and we've got duck hunting weather. But it's been a roller coaster, as you know, Larry. Ever since late March, really, it hadn't stopped. It's been up and down, up and down on both lake levels and weather. And uh, here we are putting on coveralls and bib overalls this week in late april when we should be worried about sunscreen and things of that nature it's going to rebound but uh it's been a crazy week and it's kind of thrown the fishermen a little bit of a curve anytime you get a dramatic change and drop in surf temperatures and gale northeast winds and yeah. wind is a big factor here yes. on kentucky lake it just dictates where you can fish and how you can fish so it's been kind of a double whammy but uh we're coming out of it well i know uh uh, Cooksey asked when we started this show uh, to Wong about where to catch brim, and uh, I, I, I've never heard uh, Wong double talk so much and never got around to telling him. He was telling us where all the bass were and everything. Cooksey's getting had his pen out and he, a number two pencil. and I, I just wanted to know if he thought the water temps were going to be warm enough for him to spawn on this moon we've got coming yeah. up this week. All right. <laughs> Tell us, McAdams. It's, it's strange. We've got a full moon coming up here you in late April. Monday, we'll Monday. We'll have another one until the 26th of May on the next one. And traditionally, the early, the first moon, you know, they have a little bit of activity. But uh, this cold weather, I think, has backed up the biological clock some, clock some degree. We've got a full moon Monday. And I think there'll be a little activity probably next week since it's going to be warm enough and in the wake of the moon. But uh, I think the biological clock's been pushed back about a week with this weather we've having, in. So I think our peak bluegill will start once May gets here a little bit better than it will next week. So I yeah. think we're still about a week away from some significant activity. Okay, Bill. Is that, does that answer your question or you got another yes, question? Sir. That, you got yes, another? sir. Okay. Much, well, and, and much more succinctly than Ron. Well, I didn't want to tell Ron that. <laughs> and I, now he'll be hearing that, you know. He'll want to know what happened and everything. But so, he just talked about creature baits and spinner baits. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- thunder cricket and everything like that. And I didn't, I, I, you know. Yeah. But uh, so what about crappie then? I mean, what have we done on that? Well, it's been a confusing year, quite frankly. I've been filleting fish all week, you know, and I always watch the fish tables and look at those females. And most of our fish still had eggs in them just a few days ago. Now, 
now. Really? There were okay. some right on the threshold of spawning, and uh, most usually by mid to late April, a lot of our fish have already spawned up here. Yeah. There's always a few that do it late. However, this year, all the females last week that I dressed were still sporting a big bloated really? egg sack. And I think since then, a few fish have probably tried to, but when they go in and try, as they have once or twice already in April, and you get a cold front, uh, it throws them back a little bit, and sometimes they'll back up just for a few days and wait for surface temperatures to come back, and then they'll go up and do their thing. But this year, we've had so much fluctuation in lake levels, plus the cold fronts. Yeah. And uh, I think it's gone, thrown the fish off a little bit. And if they make a few attempts and don't get the right conditions, sometimes on rare occasions, yeah. but sometimes they'll reabsorb those eggs and, and they won't spawn. Now, whether or not that's happening this year remains to be seen, but. Uh, I remember my old friend Jed Petty, the fisher's biologist, oh, years Jed. ago. It yes, kind of yes. took me under his wing yeah. many, many years ago me, when I was too. Me going too. to college. And yeah. he, he'd tell you right quick, you know, and there's times when fish will reabsorb their eggs when the conditions aren't right. So I hope that doesn't happen this year. But if it, if it does, it's certainly understandable why they've been confused. Well, I mean, you got a degree. Yeah. You got a biology, you got a biology degree from, the, from uh, Bethel, so you ought to know all of it by now. Steve, so I mean, well, I, 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 those fish keep me <laughs> humble. I've been chasing them a long time, as do the ducks. But well, now they will keep they, you humble if you chase them long enough. There you go. You I, break... I don't know. It's been confusing year. You know, I've got spots where I know the certain lake levels where those fish ought to move up in pre-spawn and peak spawn phases, and they stair step their way up out of deep water traditionally. That had not happened this year because of all the variables that we've had, and so it's it's been strange on me. I mean, there's some places where I normally fish second and third week of April that have just almost been void of fish. And wow. so they've been yeah. making me scratch my head a lot this spring. Well, it's uh, been a head scratcher, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. you brought up ducks. I mean, as, as, as we all know, we had the the great freeze in February, uh, and then uh, our duck season we didn't freeze. Uh, I don't think that much. Yep. And, uh, and right. we always optimistic, you know, we always say, that's going to be better next year. Right, Cooksy? I mean, uh the duck hunter. That's what I've, I've only been doing that 53 years, though. <laughs> only 53 years. <laughs> well, let's don't get McAdams into age right now. So, uh, oh, no. When, when we yeah, get. Yeah, it's just been a roller coaster. And, you know, I, I look forward to May each year because that's the peak of our bluegill and shell cracker spawning here. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's high time that's starting to happen. But, uh, th- you know, we didn't have the spawning last year that we really should have. I remember. We had some good catches of bluegill. And, but our red air numbers were down last year. But since we've lost a lot of aquatic vegetation up here, it's, it's changed our bluegill and shelf cracker fishing a little bit. But right now we need some warm, humid weather. Well, that's what we all want. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm glad that you've got a uh, new commissioner from Henry County. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little about this man that uh, maybe we don't know? And uh, I'm sure. Well, I've known money. I've known Money Blue for a long, long time. He was our former Henry County Sheriff. Here, yes. And yeah. Prior to that, he's always been involved in a lot of wildlife issues and always supported us. And uh, I think he'll make a great commissioner. Well, it's going to be a learning curve for anybody when they first come on the Wildlife Commission, but uh, I think he'll do a good job. And Bill Cox is coming back for a yep. third, you know, third he's been time. On many, yeah. many years. So yes. Bill knows the ropes, and uh, it sounds like we've got some good ones on there. I asked Bill last week on this show if uh, he was going to try to break Tom Hensley's record, you know. For, I believe your hand's broken. <laughs> yeah, it's close. It's going to be real close. They may have to run again together. But yeah. uh, I was glad to see uh, the ex-sheriff come on the and we yeah. need we probably Monty, need, Monty will do that. We probably need to talk to him down the road sometime too on this show because he, sure he brings a, glad to be on. a new perspective yeah. and and also a man from law enforcement. It's uh, you're familiar with that, I know. Right, uh, right. With the uh, you know, it's good. it's it's such a complex issue being on a commission. You got to listen to a lot of different oh, opinions really? from different parts of the state. So oh. you know, it's a <laughs> thankless job sometimes, but. Anybody that's got a good background like Monty and Bill, they'll do a good job. Well, we hope so. And I know, Steve, uh, uh, we'll talk about this, and we talked to you many times and everything like that. And, uh, folks, uh, if you want to fish with the best, the man that knows it uh, has been doing it since uh, Teddy Roosevelt was president, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It seems like it. But, not far uh, off. Not far <laughs> off, and uh, it's probably filleted more fish than anybody that I know of up there. Uh, how do they contact you and, uh, uh, and and maybe get a trip with you? 
Be glad to have your listeners call me anytime, Larry. The best way to reach me is just at my website at stevemcadams.com, and we'd love to have them come see us. And that's M-C-C-A-D-A-M-S. He spells it the correct way, like I do Ray. Like I do Ray. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the way I do it. Hey, Steve, thank you, buddy. All right. Great to be with you. Good good talk to you, Bill. We hope to come up and see you. Hope to come up and see you soon. Okay, buddy, I, I want right to. I, I want to rent you for an hour. Okay, I'll talk to you. You got it. You right. do it, buddy. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, Bill Cooksey. Uh, no one knows the uh, Kentucky Lake more than Steve McAdams. No, uh, no. I mean, I just, he, he, his website's the first place I looked when I hadn't been up there lately, and I'm trying to get an idea where where to start. Fishing. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how he does what he does. That fishing report. Folks, I mean, you go to his website. You you can go to my website again, lroutdoors.com. We post his his fishing report is one of the most comprehensive, uh, and, mm-hmm. and, and he's still doing it. And now he may not talk about it, but he's been doing it for almost fifty years. I mean, you know, he's yeah. That's a lot of time on the water. He's a cancer survivor. He has a youth fishing rodeo, but uh, uh, one of the best. So uh, now you know, Steve. Uh, told you more than ron told you about where to catch bluegill all right I that's wanted, right i wanted to make sure that's why I, uh, when ron said it he wanted to take and move out for a little <clears throat> while we, we we accommodated didn't we so uh well I, yeah and i may just go ahead and go turkey hunting instead of brim fishing <laughs> right the I, I See, think, I've, I've got until the new moon in may to really worry about brim i guess yeah well we got till may 17th on uh, the turkeys or not in the second but uh but uh, I hope it all works out. Let's take a break on Outdoors and Larry Ray, and let's close this baby out. We'll be right back.